Welcome to LINK 2024. I am Jonathan Downer from Edinburgh in Scotland. I have the pleasure to be here with Marcus Mollenbrook from Heidelberg in Germany to discuss the results of the SESAME study. Marcus, can you tell us a little bit about the SESAME study? Yes, sure. So the SESAME study is the first GCP study. GCP means good clinical practice about the use of Sophia Sophia Plus catheter for first-line aspiration in patients suffering acute ischemic stroke in the anterior circulation. So it's a multi-center European study uh, in which we enrolled 250 patients from different countries, from France, Germany, Austria, Italy and the Netherlands. And um, the idea was to focus uh, on the outcome of the patient because this was the uh, primary outcome as well as of the first pass effect. Because uh, if we think about different uh, technologies and different techniques, at the end this is the measurement how we can judge if this device or if this uh, treatment uh, strategy is sufficient or not. So can you talk us through the technique that was used in the study and that you were looking at? So basically it was recommended to use the Sophia Sophia Plus catheter for up to three attempts of aspiration. Of course it was also possible to switch the uh, strategy after one attempt, but uh, this actually occurs uh, in less than 20%, meaning uh, in the majority of cases the aspiration was sufficient. So the first pass effect, for example, was almost 50%, so 49%. And then only 19% in additional stent retriever was used. Uh, for example, if the uh, reperfusion or the aspiration result was not sufficient. And how were the clinical outcomes for patients included in the study? Yeah, so the clinical outcome was actually quite high, so that was a little bit surprise for us. So more than 60% of the patients had an MRS 0 to 2 after 90 days, which is of course uh, explained by the very fast treatment of uh, usually less uh, than 30 minutes uh, when the aspiration was successful. But the other reason, of course, was we focus on patients with uh, really good um, baseline uh, characteristics. So, for example, the time window was short, so the treatment was started within the first six hours of the tr uh, after uh, presentation. Uh, or the pre-MRS was between zero to one and the imaging aspect should be at least six or higher. So it's a combination of different factors, but at the end, if you look, for example, to the NIH drop after 24 hours, you see, so the median baseline NIH was 14 and after 24 hours, there was a major drop of 10 points uh, to four in uh, the majority of cases, which indicates that basically the aspiration is a very, very successful uh, treatment strategy. And how did the Sophia aspiration perform in terms of non-target embolization? So that was also a surprise for us because quite often uh, when we talk about this specific uh, complication, uh, most of the colleagues, they ask for uh, the use of a balloon guide catheter. But here in this registry, actually, the, the number was quite low. So less than 10% actually used a balloon guide catheter. Uh, and it seems if you use a large bore catheter like the Sophia Plus, which is a six French catheter, and you place it in the M1, and the majority of patients in this registry had an M1 occlusion, so more than 70% of the cases, it seems that a balloon guide catheter is not really necessary because the rate of ENT, so embolization to a new territory, was less than 4%. And what do you think we can learn from your study about maximizing the efficacy of aspiration as a technique? So first, I think uh, we can learn that uh, it's always better to use the largest available aspiration catheter and this is what we see in the study because more than 80% use the Sophia Plus catheter and only for the 
distal M1 and M2s the Sophia 5 French was used. This is the first point. Uh, it seems that there is no difference between using a syringe or a pump, so it was almost half and half. And uh, we did a multiple regression analysis and there was no uh, sign that uh, a pump or a syringe is more efficacy than the other aspiration um, strategy. And the second point is, I think, if we go for aspiration first, what we usually do, especially in M1s, because we know this from other randomized control trials as well, that we should start uh, with the aspiration right in front of the um, clot. So if we have a good engagement of the catheter to the clot, this is the time where we should start the aspiration. If we start too early, it might affect the vessel, meaning that you can collapse the vessel. And this obviously leads to a, a low rate or a, let's say uh, to an unsuccessful aspiration maneuver. So that's, that's uh, in summary, the important points. One last point is if the aspiration is not successful, you can try, you can give a next try, but usually after the second attempt, I think then it's a good idea to change because the rate of having a successful aspiration after a second or third attempt is very, very low. So it's less than 10%. So, but basically, we can say first line aspiration, uh, first line reperfusion was roughly 50%. And if we continue with two or three attempts, you can, we can increase it to 58%. So uh, the SESAME study in summary seems to show that we can achieve good rates of recanalization using SOFIA and SOFIA Plus for aspiration uh, with very low rates of embolization to new territories, which is um, a good reflection on this technique. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.